What's the political background, geopolitical, geostrategical background of this whole hype? This is, uh, especially in Eastern Europe, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, we're talking about Poland, Ukraine, uh, Romania and Bulgaria. Um, on the one hand, of course, there is the old nemesis, Russia and Gazprom. Uh, which has been selling uh, pri uh, gas to, to small countries like, like Bulgaria, for example, for enormously high, high prices that, uh, you know, they sell much cheaper to Germany, let's say. Uh, so, so and, 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 and countries in Eastern Europe have generally seen Russia as a threat. And, and, and so there is a great incentive to move away from Russian gas and to diversify into other sources. So that's, that's so the, on the one hand, it's Russia, of course. But on the other hand, it's, it's often the US, is, U.S. has very close relationship, diplomatic relationship with most of these East European countries, the new Europe, as they used to be called, once upon a time. Um, uh, now, the U.S. State Department in 2010 organized um, its own unit called the, the uh, Global Shale Gas Initiative, recently renamed Unconventional Gas Technical Engagement Program. And what it aims to do is to bring in technology, expertise, and, and, and possibly financial uh, resources into, into countries um, that are friendly to the U.S. and where the U.S. is trying to develop these shale gas resources. So this is happening in Indonesia, this is happening in, in um, uh, Argentina, this is happening in China, uh, all around the world right now. So there is this, this uh, uh, U.S. Uh, State Department program which, which tries to export fracking technology um, around the world. Um, and so, and so, Poland, for example, has uh, been a very sort of a, um, a, a very, very good case of this because, uh, on the one hand, Polish antagonism um, towards Russians and Russia is, is is extremely high. On the other hand, they're extremely friendly with with um, the U.S. So these two factors have sort of combined in order to make uh, shale gas so uh, hyped up in Poland, and mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of Poles support it because of mostly their fear of Russia, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, the thing about, again, uh, this, is, this is what I, what I would call a U.S. geopolitical strategy to, to, to limit Russian energy and this political interests in Eastern Europe. Uh, so it is, it is what the State Department does. It is, it is the, the US, po U.S. policy. But um, generally, when you, when, you look at, when you look at the damage that this kind of, this kind of uh, industry does, uh, when you look at the economics of it, uh, when you look at um, the public opposition, because there is great public opposition uh, in, in, in Eastern Europe uh, and in Europe in general against this, uh, which cannot be ignored. A lot of environmental movements and so on. So when you look at these three factors, uh, then you, uh, you, know, you start to question the viability of shale gas and why, why it matters so much to Europe. And why instead of, um, I oftentimes think, uh, why instead of developing this new kind of fossil fuel or trying to develop it, we're not working towards renewables, right? Where you have to be working towards solar energy, mm -hmm. um, wind. I mean, if you're going, if you're going to be energy independent, truly, uh, then these are resources that are endless. They're renewables. Uh, so I think more efforts need need to go into that instead of instead of uh, refocusing again our our. Um, uh, we're focusing our, our attention on, 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 other, on other fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. Global warming cannot be ignored, of course. Uh, we've got 400 million uh, parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more than probably for the last 600,000 years. Uh, the human uh, anthropogenic factor is very, very visible, very strong on the planet. So um, basically switching to shale gas is like switching from Marlboros to Marlboro lights. Um, you know, it's, it's not a solution. Uh, and it's not. I think it's a bridge to nowhere, pretty much. Um, and and uh, and I feel that this this kind of takes uh, this kind of thing politically takes attention takes the attention away from other more uh, quick, more in, right now even quite cheap uh, sources of energy like like solar and and wind, where energy when the prices have fallen a lot in the last years. Um, so um, I, you know. Politically, I, I feel that um, that this is not a. I mean, the U.S. is not good, doing good favor to to Europe, uh, and it's not uh, it's not encouraging energy independence, but rather continued fossil dependence, continued energy dependence on on technologies, on uh, that for fracking, on on investments for fracking, and so on. And this would stop at a certain point. So what happens then? Uh, for me, uh, for me, this is not a solution. Shale gas is not a solution for Europe's uh, energy problems. What can you tell me about um, 
company politics, you know, mm -hmm. about I'm thinking about their portfolio, the, the shares, the, and so on. Yeah, uh, well, uh, a lot of the talk uh, when, when shale gas was heavily promoted, and it still is in, in, in Eastern Europe, in 2011, 2012, a lot of the arguments uh, centered around the fact that, uh, that gas, after the shale revolution in the U.S., gas prices have fallen so much that, uh, that now the U.S. has five times cheaper gas than in Europe. Uh, to a certain extent, that was right, uh, but also these very low prices, sometimes up to what's two dollars per million BTUs. That's a an energy unit. Um, uh, is actually a lot of the companies were were uh, at a loss, working at a loss because usually the break-even price for this kind of gas is about five dollars. And so a lot of what you would see in to, starting in 2011 and more even more so in 2012 was that a lot of companies in the states that were initially very you know, uh, very excited about shale gas. They started moving away from shale gas and from gas generally. Uh, they started moving into oil and to other things. Uh, even if you look at the rig count, I, I find this, this fascinating to look at the rig count dedicated to gas and oil in the States. I think in, in about 2008, the, out of 2,000 rigs, maybe 1,500 were dedicated to uh, just to gas. Now there are only 300. Uh, this resource has not, uh, you know, panned out financially as companies have hoped. A lot of it have been have resembled more of a Ponzi scheme actually than um, than, a, than a real solution uh, for the economy in the states for for uh, energy energy uh, problems. Uh, so so uh, I mean, but but that's also the natural the natural cycle and the dangerous cycle of, of fossil fuels. They go through boom, boom and busts, and basing an economy around a certain boom is extremely dangerous because the next year prices fall, markets are different, and then the entire sector around this, including hotels, including services, people who have relied on this boom to build up lives and build mm -hmm. up businesses, everything collapses within a year. And so basing economies on this kind of booms and busts of, of fossil fuels, whether it's gas, whether it's oil, is extremely dangerous and could destabilize the entire economy of the country, not only that sector, that particular sector. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about th this other aspect that a, a company like, let's like say, Chevron might be interested to to uh, have new and new resources yeah. uh, in their portfolio just to, to get money that they invest other... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. One of, the, one of the speculations around why, okay, so if, if shale gas in, is in, unprofitable at this point in Europe, why do companies like Chevron insist on buying land, on, on exploring for, for gas. Um, well, for example, there is this thing that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, the Security and Exchange Commission in the U.S. allowed uh, what's called non-conventional resources uh, to be uh, considered as part of the, the company's portfolio. Um, therefore, the, the shares of the company rise when the company proves more and more resources. Now. Uh, it, it oftentimes happens that the, the company could actually prove resources and then, although these resources are not really profitable to extract, but then the, the shares of the company rise in general because, because it has more resources. So it's, a not, it's, a, it's sort of a financial instrument to, in, to boost up the portfolio, to boost up the, the share price of, of, of the company. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, one speculation around, around Eastern Europe has been that that actually companies are using this this land, these new concessions, these new kind of exploration for new reserves, as a way to increase their company portfolios uh, in general. So that's that's one well, that's one theory of, of of what's happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Sure.